Hi students, how are you? So today I came before you to discuss some important uh, models from the chapter differentiation. So today I have taken all these problems from the textbook, uh, Senge textbook. Generally, majority of the students, those who are preparing for JE mains and advanced, uh, they will take this chapter textbook, Senge textbook. So I have taken uh, some good number of problems from that chapter, uh, from that uh, Senge's test book. So let us discuss these problems, okay, one by one. So the first problem is, f of x is equal to one function is given. The function is x upon 1 plus x plus x by 1 plus x times 1 plus 2x plus x by 1 plus 2x plus 1 plus 3x, so on. It is going on, infinite number of terms. So, we have to discuss the continuity of this function at x is equal to 0. We have to discuss the continuity of this function at x is equal to 0, right. Then how to proceed this problem, right. So, at x is equal to 0, we have to find out the left hand derivative and the right hand derivative. So, so, before going to that, first to see the function. So, this is an infinite function. We have to this infinite number of terms this is, we have to discuss the continuity at f of, f of x at x is equal to 0. So, first of all simplify this function, such a very big function it is going on infinite number of terms, first to simplify this function. To simplify this function what we have to do is, first to find out the nth term of this function, okay now. So, what will be the nth term of this function, see here f of x is equal to x upon 1 plus x x upon 1 plus x second term, this is 1 plus 2x plus so on, what will be the your nth term? Observe here, every term is in the fractional type, numerator and denominator, numerator, denominator. In the numerator, what you are getting? x, 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 x. Therefore, in nth term also, x should be there. Okay, now, now what will be the denominator? See here, first term is 1 plus x. Second term is denominator, I am concentrating on denominator, 1 plus x into 1 plus 2x. That means second term 2x, 1 plus 2x into 1 plus 3x, third term 3x, first term here 1x, second term 2x, third term 3x, before term is 2x. Understand? That means your nth term will be 1 plus nx before that 1 plus n minus 1 into x, this will be your nth term. Understand here, first term 1x, second term 2x, before that 1x, third term 3x, before term 2x, okay now. Like that nth term also should be nx, before that n minus 1 into x, of course 1 plus. So, first I am finding sum to n terms, I am finding sum to n terms, afterwards I will find out sum to infinite number of terms, okay, right. After this, everybody knows, let us simplify this by taking partial fraction. By observation, by observation, we can say that x by 1 plus x as can I write down 1 by 1 minus like this, right, 1 plus x minus 1 plus 1 minus 1 will cancel. So, this is equal to 1 by 1 plus x minus 1 by 1 plus 2x can I write down. So, this is 1 plus 2x minus 1 minus x, 2x minus x, x you will get. So, on last term 1 plus n minus 1 into x minus 1 by 1 plus nx. Like that we can separate the partial fractions. Now, definitely this type of problems cancellation will be there. Cancellation will be there. Cancellation of terms will be there. What are the cancellations see here? Minus 1 by 1 plus x. These two will be cancelled. So, the, the first every two brackets consecutive two brackets, the second term is cancelling with the first term, okay. Like that if you cancel here also, in the, this is the last bracket and this is the previous bracket. So, here the second term should be cancelled with the first term of the second bracket. Second term of the first bracket, uh, sorry, second term of the first bracket is cancelling with the first term of the second bracket. So, this is the last term, last term. So, previous bracket whatever may be that. So, this is a second term should be cancelled with first term, okay. So, what are the remaining terms what we get? 
So, f of x is equal to 1, first here 1 remains, there last term will remains minus 1 by 1 plus n x, ok. Right. Do not try to simplify this, try to put it like that. So, this is sum to n terms, sum to n terms. Now, I am going to find out the derivative of this function to sum to infinite number of terms. So, here infinite number of terms, that means here n tends to infinity. So, what is this n tends to infinity? So, your f of x is equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by 1 plus n x. This is your f of x. Understand why? Because sum to infinite number of terms we have to find out. So, limit n tends to infinity 1 plus 1 by 1 plus n x means obviously is equal to how much? 1 minus as n tends to infinity 1 by 1 plus n x tends to 0. Therefore, 1 minus 0 is equal to 1. That means as n value tends to infinity, the sum is convergent to 1, converges to 1. Okay. And uh, at x is equal to 0, at exactly at x is equal to 0, so what is its value? At x is equal to 0, what is your f of x value? What is your f of x value? Substitute here 0, f of 0, 0 by 1 plus 0. 0 by 1, 0. 0 by 1 plus 0, 1 plus 2 into 0. That means this is 1 plus 0, 1, 1 plus 0 is 1, 1 into 1. That means 0 by 1, 0. That means at x is equal to 0, the function is equal to 0. Okay. So, from this, what we know, we can uh, uh, write this function in a piecewise uh, function form. So, as n value tends to infinity, that means when n is not equal to when x is not equal to 0, the value is equal to 1. When x is equal to 0, the function value is 0. So, I will write it in the function. So, welcome back. So, the, our function is equal to f of x is equal to 0 when x is equal to 0. 1 f x is not equal to 1. As n tends to infinity, we got how much? As n value tends to infinity, that means and as you are going on increasing, as we are going on increasing, the functional value approaches to 1. Okay, now. So, when x f of x is equal to 0, when x is equal to 0, f of x value is 0. When x is not equal to 1, your f of x value is 1. So, clearly, this function is not continuous at x is equal to 0. How? See here, if you draw the graph. So, this is a x axis and y axis. This is 0. When x is equal to 0, the functional value is 0, here 0. When x is not equal to 1, that means y is equal to 1. So, y is equal to 1 means break again. So, this is y is equal to 1, f of x is equal to 1. So, when x value not equal to 0, that means either left hand side or right hand side, its functional value is equal to 1. At exactly x is equal to 0, at exactly x is equal to 0, f of x is equal to 0. Therefore, the function is that is the curve is break at x is equal to 0. Therefore, f, of, f is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. The function is discontinuous at x is equal to 0. Otherwise, sometimes options continuous at x belongs to r minus 0, x belongs to r minus, set of all real numbers, set of all real numbers, except at 0, it is continuous. Otherwise, it is dis discontinuous at x is equal to 0. So, both right, both answers are right. Okay, now, right. I hope that you understand this solution. Let us go for next problem. Welcome to second problem. The second problem is, the function f of x is defined as f of x is equal to x square plus ax plus 1 if x is rational number. f of x is equal to ax square plus 2x plus b if x is irrational number. That means, if x is a rational number, the function is defined as x square plus ax plus 1. If x is a irrational number, if x is an irrational number, the function is defined as ax square plus 2x plus b. Okay, now, right. He is saying that he is continuous at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. It is continuous at x is equal to 1 and x is equal to 2. Then find the values of a and b. 
see here the question try to understand this question solution this is a number line this is a number line so here 1 and 2 so here 1 is a rational number 2 is also a rational number clear no doubt 1 is a rational number and 2 is also a rational number at 1 at uh, x is equal to 1 the function is continuous the function is continuous if you observe from one left hand side and right hand side that is uh, when it is saying continuous the left hand side derivative send the right hand side derivative sorry left hand side limit and the right hand side limit should be equal understand both should be equal now from one left side and right side what number will be there in the neighborhood of one those numbers may be rational numbers may be irrational numbers from in the one neighborhood from left side and right side maybe rational numbers will be there maybe irrational number will be there or both rational numbers will be there both irrational numbers also will be there understand first you try to understand that that means to find the values of a and b let us suppose that from left side rational number function rational number is there and the right side irrational number is there let us approaching the x value that means at x is equal to 1 f is continuous f at is continuous that is means what left hand side li uh, limit is equal to rhn lhl is equal to rhn understand left hand side limit is equal to right hand side limit at x is equal to 1 left hand side limit and right hand side limit if you write down both same uh, x square plus ax plus 1 here also both side we can we won't get any x a value both will get cancelled let us suppose that in the left hand side rational number its side this side right side irrational number is there that means so that means limit extends to limit extends to 1 minus rational number any you know x square plus ax plus 1 limit extends to 1 plus irrational number that is ax square plus 2x plus b you may ask one doubt sir both side can we take rational number as approaching yes we can take we can take if you take both the sides in nothing will get we will won't get anything right now substitute here x is equal to 1 see this is 1 plus a plus 1 is equal to a plus 2 plus b okay so here a a will get cancelled 1 plus 1 2 this is a 2 plus b b value is equal to 0 we got the b value is equal to 0 same concept same thing at a 2 2 also right hand limit so right side uh, irrational number and the left side rational number otherwise this side rational number and that side rational number okay so let us see this see here at x is equal to 2 left hand side limit is equal to right hand side limit so limit extends to 2 minus f of x is equal to limit extends to 2 plus f of x okay now right see here limit extends to 2 minus anything you can take anything you take that means x square plus ax plus 1 so limit extends to 2 plus so this is a ax square plus 2x plus b okay so x is equal to 2 substitute x is equal to 2 substitute this is equal to 4 plus 2a plus 1 is equal to this is equal to 4a plus 2 plus b okay now so wherever x is there i substitute it to 2 square 4 2a so any more cancel 4 4 cancel already b value is also 0 so 2a plus 1 is equal to 4a 2a plus 4 is equal to a a therefore 2a is equal to 1 this implies a is equal to 1 by 2 a value is equal to 1 by 2 like that we got a value and b value the one thing you have to observe is at x is since the function is continuous at x is equal to 1 we can take the left hand side derivative and so left hand side limit and right hand side limit both should be equal to 1 okay now so i hope that you understand this solution
So, this is one of the uh, uh, variety problem it may be asked for JE mains examination. So, let us go for next problem. Welcome to the next problem. So, the problem is find the equation of the normal to the curve y is equal to modulus of x square minus modulus of x. So, why I have taken this problem is this type of problems will be asked in your JE mains examination. If it is a clearly a function y is equal to some x square plus something something without modulus, without modulus the function is there everybody can do, can, can do. But here there are two modulus are there, one modulus is outside and again inside one modulus is there. First you have to concentrate how to remove that modulus, modulus or step function or fractional part function, signum functions whatever may be that. First you have to concentrate on after removing this modulus everybody can do that, we will find out dy by dx, we will substitute x is equal to minus 2, we will get the slope of the uh, tangent afterwards we will find out the slope of the normal then we will find the equation of the normal. But the thing is how to remove these two modulus, how to remove these two modulus. The first two thing is where the tangent is drawing x is equal to minus 2. x is equal to minus 2 means in the neighborhood of minus 2. So, here minus 2 will be there in the neighborhood of minus 2 all functions are defined in the neighborhood of this values. In the neighborhood of minus 2, minus 2 neighborhood means that side, this side, you will get a negative values or positive values. First thing you tell, you will get negative values or positive values, definitely you will get negative values. In the neighborhood of x is equal to minus 2, in the neighborhood of minus 2, you will get negative values. That is why x is less than 0, therefore modulus of x is minus x. Therefore, your bracket will be modulus of x square minus modulus of minus x value is minus x. Already minus is there plus x. Happy. One modulus is removed. Now, what about this modulus? Final modulus. Let us see that. In the neighborhood of minus 2, let us take what? See what happens. What is the value of x square plus x? It is greater than 0 na, less than 0 na. Let us check. Let us take any one value here in the neighborhood of very easy. Let us take x is equal to minus 1.5. x is equal to minus 1.5 for uh, easiness. Okay. Now, what is x square? x square plus x value is equal to how much? x square value is minus 1.5 whole square. Minus 1.5 whole square means 2.25 minus x value is minus 1.5 is greater than 0 now less than 0 now definitely it is greater than 0 in the neighborhood of x whatever maybe if you take minus 1.99 you take here minus 1.9999 you, you can take it will definitely greater than 0 therefore x square plus modulus of x square plus x value will become x square plus x therefore your y is equal to x square plus x this is your main function afterwards everybody can do this problem okay now you know how to find out the derivative of the uh, how to find out the equation of the normal so what is the uh, if it x is equal to minus 2 so what is your y value so minus 2 whole square 4 4 minus 2 that is equal to 2 so what is your point minus 2 comma 2 so you got the point and uh, what is the slope of the normal that is a dy by dx this is the slope of the tangent tangent so this is equal to 2x plus 1 that is equal to 2 into minus 2 plus 1 minus 4 plus 1 minus 3 minus 3 what is the slope of the normal that is equal to 1 by 3 minus 1 by 3 means both multiplied 1 by 3 so you know the slope what is the equation of the normal? So, y minus y1 is equal to m means 1 by 3 into x minus x1. You simplify and you will get the answer. Okay. Getting the answer is not there. The first thing is how to remove these brackets. How to remove these brackets. So, here at x is equal to minus 2. That means in the neighborhood of minus 2, x value is 0. If he is saying at x is equal to 2, x x is equal to 2 
in the neighborhood of 2 x values are greater than 0 that means you are as, as your x value approaching to 2 that means x value approaches to positive values here x value approaches to negative values understand so from this problem i hope that you catch one point you catch one point that means whenever at x is equal to minus 2 negatives or positives given you have to consider the, the neighborhood okay i hope that you understand this solution so let us go for next problem dear students welcome to this problem equation of the tangent to the curve y is equal to sin inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square at x is equal to root 3 okay then how to proceed this problem very easy if it is, seems to very easy so it is a uh, first of all you have to find out the slope of the tangent that means you have to find out the dy by dx if you find out the dy by dx of this function directly it becomes very very difficult why because sin inverse of x derivative is 1 by 1 plus x square sorry 1 by root of 1 minus x square and that means this whole square again u by v formula you have to write down so very very difficult to do then how to proceed so to do so that means you have to simplify this function you have to simplify this function using properties of inverse trigonometric functions if you have the grip over inverse trigonometric function properties so the simplification is very very easy then how to do this see here x is equal to root 3 that means x greater than 1 when x greater than 1 therefore sin inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square value is pi minus 2 tan inverse of x pi minus 2 tan inverse of x that is the first thing we have to do so without doing this if you start doing the problems are very very difficult okay now right. after knowing this the problem of finding a equation of the tangent is very very easy so therefore what is the derivative of this first function that is minus 2 by 1 plus x square okay now why pi 0 tan inverse of x derivative 1 by 1 plus x square what is the slope of the tangent slope of the tangent is equal to minus 2 by 1 plus x value is root 3 root 3 whole square 3 that is minus 2 by 4 this is minus 1 by 2 you got the slope of the tangent so we want the point y coordinate so therefore your y coordinate is y is equal to pi minus 2 tan inverse of root 3 that is y is equal to pi minus tan inverse of root 3 means uh, root 3 is for 60 degrees that is equal to pi by 3 therefore y is equal to 3 pi minus 2 pi pi by 3 therefore what is your point so your x value is root 3 y value is pi by 3 y value is pi by 3 and your slope is equal to minus 1 by 2 okay now what is your equation of the tangent so y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 you simplify this you will get the answer this whole problem this whole problem everything lies here this is the very very important step if y is equal to sin inverse of 2x by 1 plus x square when x greater than 1 y value is pi minus 2 tan inverse of x if you know that uh, concept this everything problem is everybody anybody can do this okay right i hope that you understand this solution let us go for next problem welcome to this problem so the problem is find the equation of the tangent to the curve y is equal to x square into sin of 1 by x where x not equal to 0 x is equal to 0 at the origin so this also the problem taken from Senge's textbook then how to do this type of problem so here the function is defined as piecewise piecewise they at the origin means what it is given that the point is 0 comma 0 the tangent is a uh, uh, equation of the tangent at the curve 0 comma 0 it is given so if you find out the slope of the curve the problem will be over so before finding the slope of the tangent at 0 comma 0 we have to be check whether the function is continuous at 0 comma 0 why because so is asking the function is a so he has drawn there is a curve we don't know this curve he is drawing a tangent at this point so this is a tangent at 0 comma 0 but we have to check whether 
the function is the curve is continuous at 0 comma 0 first of all we have to check that if it is not continuous at 0 comma 0 we cannot draw the tangent at 0 comma 0 ok now right for that we have to find out the left hand side derivative and the right hand side derivative ok so here when x is not equal to 0 this is the same function means the left hand side and right hand side both are same so clearly so this is clearly limit extends to 0 x square into sin of 1 by x value is equal to 0 sir how it is possible sir by taking uh, sandwich theorem we know we can do that what is the sandwich theorem minus 1 less than or equal to sin of 1 by x less than or equal to 1 that means sin theta is range uh, ranges from minus 1 to 1 so multiply with the x square minus x square into x square sin of 1 by x if is less than or equal to x square so if you limit apply limit extends to 0 minus x square is same as limit extends to 0 x square is same as 0 by sandwich theorem limit extends to 0 x square sin of 1 by x is equal to 0 which is equal to f of 0 f of 0 is equal to 0 that means limit extends to 0 f of x is equal to f of 0 therefore the curve is continuous at 0 comma 0 therefore there exists a tangent at 0 comma 0 okay now very happy now we can draw the tangent now our aim is to find the slope of the tangent so let us find out the slope of the tangent to find the slope of the tangent so we have to find out the derivative so you can find out the left hand derivative or right hand derivative no problem why because the left hand right hand the function is defined as same at x is equal to 0 left hand side and right hand side the function is defined as same so what is our derivative formula so f dash of a is equal to limit h tends to 0 f of a plus h minus f of a whole divided by h okay now so this is a right hand side derivative if it is a left hand side derivative here minus h will come here also minus h both are same answers you will get why because the function is same for x left hand side and right hand side the function is defined as same therefore at f dash of 0 that means at x is equal to 0 we have to find out the derivative of that function h tends to 0 f of a value 0 f of h minus f of 0 by h ok now right so this is equal to limit h tends to 0 f of h means h square into sin of 1 by h minus f of 0 is equal to 0 by h here one controversial will come f of 0 is equal to 0 how can it be let us check here f of x is equal to x square into sin of 1 by x then f of 0 is equal to 0 square into sin of 1 by 0 you are saying you are saying here 1 by 0 infinity you now here one controversy will come so here the thing is x square is 0 that is 0 whatever may be this value sin of 1 by 0 sin of infinity whatever may be that that value lies between minus 1 to 1 what is the range of sin theta range of sin theta is minus 1 to 1 maximum value is 1 minimum value is minus 1 including minus 1 and 1 sin takes all values sin of whatever may be the value real number infinity is also one of the real number so sin of infinity whatever may be that sin theta lies between minus 1 to 1 that means theta in sorry 0 into one finite value that is equal to 0 understand 0 into some finite value 0 therefore so here it will become 0 so that is the reason behind this if anybody ask you so what is that 0 x square is 0 sign of anything lies between minus 1 to 1 that is a finite value so here also so here also one h will get cancel limit h tends to 0 so this is a h into sin of 1 by h here also the same argument will come same argument will come h tends to 0 substitute here 0 into as h value tends to 0 as h value tends to 0 sin of any value whatever may be that value it uh, lies between minus 1 to 1 
sin of whatever may be that sin of as h value tends to 0 sin of whatever may be that value lies between minus 1 and 1 and it, it approaches to from minus 1 to 1 only that is a finite value therefore 0 ok now so this is nothing but slope of the tangent derivative slope of the tangent at x is equal to 0 therefore slope of the tangent m is equal to 0 and the, your point is 0 comma 0 so what is the equation of the tangent at 0 comma 0 the formula is y minus y1 is equal to m into x minus x1 so this is equal to y is equal to 0 therefore equation of the tangent is y is equal to 0 okay now so very very nice problem this is uh, from this problem what you have to think what have to think is first of all he is asked to find out the equation of the tangent at the origin you have to check at origin the function is continuous or not then only you have to proceed so there are certain problems will be there where you have to find out the equation of the tangent at that point the function is discontinuous okay in the options none will be there none or not, uh, not all the above none also will be there so you should be very careful okay now so i hope that you understand this solution dear students i hope that you enjoyed today's class with uh, some more problems and some more concepts and tomorrow's class i will uh, come before you until then all the best